Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 3rd of October. Rescue and relief operations continue in India's flood hit Bihar. Taliban delegation meets Pakistani foreign minister in Islamabad. And Bangladesh PM Hasina arrives in India on four day visit. And now for all the details. Rescue and relief operations continued with full force in India's flood hit Bihar province on Thursday. Officials confirmed that death toll due to floods in the eastern province has mounted to 73. Rescue and relief operations continued with full force as the flood situation in India's eastern Bihar province remained grim on Thursday, with water levels not receding in many areas. Authorities confirmed on Thursday that death toll due to the floods in Bihar has mounted to 73. But now the capital of Bihar has been badly hit, with many streets flooded with waste-deep water. Disaster response forces were seen rescuing people, especially the elderly, from their waterlogged homes as flood water was also being pumped out in some areas. Six teams uh, are working in and around Patna and uh, they will continue to work till uh, uh, you know, life does not return back to near normal. It will not be very normal, but uh, certainly it will be near normal once uh, we, are, we are able to take care of all the rescue and uh, relief requirements. Meanwhile, inundated roads and residential areas also affected normal life in parts of northern Uttar Pradesh province, which has witnessed constant rainfall in recent days. The monsoon, which typically lasts between June to September, has already delivered 10% more rain than a 50-year average and is expected to withdraw only after early October. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar and Speaker of U.S. House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi attended an event in Washington to mark the 150th birth anniversary of iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi on Wednesday. Pelosi applauded Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's commitment to tackle climate change. India's Foreign Minister Subramaniam Jaishankar and Speaker of U.S. House of Representatives Nancy Pelosi on Wednesday attended an event at the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. to celebrate the life and legacy of iconic freedom movement leader Mahatma Gandhi on the occasion of his 150th birth anniversary. Applauding Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's commitment to tackle climate change, Speaker Pelosi said that Indian Prime Minister has upheld the values of Gandhi by taking on the challenge that poses an existential threat to the planet. Jashankar in his remarks stated that how Mahatma Gandhi was truly a figure ahead of his times and stressed that the relevance of his teachings has only grown in the modern era. Today, if there is one challenge that Gandhiji would like us to focus on, that is that of combating climate change. Through a mix of policy and advocacy, there has been a fundamental shift in the way in which India approaches this issue. Pelosi was later presented a burst of Mahatma Gandhi by Jay Shankar and Indian ambassador to the US, Harshvardhan Shringla. Residents of border villages in India's Jammu and Kashmir have expressed that they live under the shadow of death amid continuous ceasefire violations by Pakistan. Pakistani troops have resorted to unprovoked firings along the border for the past two weeks. People living in border villages in Kathua district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province have said they are scared to stay in their houses due to indiscriminate shelling and firing by Pakistan at the international border. Pakistan violated ceasefire in Hiranagar sector of Kathua in the early hours of Thursday by initiating unprovoked firing, which damaged property of a villager, however no casualty was reported. Panic-stricken villagers said 
the continuous firing and heavy shelling has badly affected their lives as they constantly remain under the shadow of death हाल तो बहुत बुरी है पंद्रह दिन से फायरिंग हो रही है हम बहुत परेशान जब जहाँ फायर जब चार बजे बम पड़ा हम मोर्चे के अंदर से जल्दबाजी से हम जल्दी से बाहर निकले और देखा टवरे को आग लग गई थी हमने जल्दबाजी से अपनी अपनी बकरियाँ बाहर निकाली और दूस गांव वालों को आवाज लगाने लगे कि उठो Earlier on Sunday, at least six people were injured in Pakistani firing in Poonch district of Jammu and Kashmir. According to Indian Foreign Ministry, Pakistan has violated the ceasefire over 2,000 times this year along the line of control, leaving over 20 people dead and scores of others injured. It is from Pakistan. A high-level delegation of Afghan Taliban officials met Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in Islamabad on Thursday. Both the parties agreed that the Afghan peace process halted by the United States last month should resume as soon as possible. A high-level delegation of Afghan Taliban officials met Pakistani Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi in Islamabad on Thursday. The foreign minister received the Taliban Political Commission or TPC delegation led by Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, one of the group's founders, said a statement by Pakistan's foreign ministry. Pakistan and the Taliban agreed that the Afghanistan peace talk process, halted by the United States last month, should resume as soon as possible, the statement said. The Taliban delegation arrived as a U.S. Special Representative for Afghanistan Reconciliation Zalmay Khalilzad is also in Islamabad well, no and holding talks with Pakistani uh, officials. Last month, U.S. President Donald Trump scuttled talks between Washington and the insurgents, slamming them for renewed violence, which also claimed the life of an American serviceman. This move derailed the nine-month-long negotiations between the U.S. and Taliban, the Taliban. in Doha. Afghan National Security Advisor Hamdullah Mohib has called the Taliban a proxy of Pakistan and its intelligence agency, ISI. He said that Afghanistan would never accept to be ruled by the proxy of a backward country like Pakistan. National Security Advisor of Afghanistan Hamdullah Mohib has called the Taliban a proxy of Pakistan and its spy agency, Inter-Services Intelligence, or ISI. While speaking at the Council on Foreign Relations in New York on Wednesday, Mohib said his country would never accept being ruled by the proxy of a backward country like Pakistan, which has a hard time feeding its own people. Mohib's comments came amid stall peace talks between the United States and the Taliban in the aftermath of the Kabul terror attack, which killed at least 12 people, including an American soldier. The Taliban are, are a proxy of Pakistan, uh, of not just Pakistan, Pakistan's intelligence agency. Afghanistan would never accept uh, to be um, uh, ruled by, by Pakistanis. I mean, if we didn't accept Soviet rule, uh, superpower, you, uh, it would be beyond imagination to accept uh, the proxy of a, uh, of a, a backward um, country which has hard time feeding its own people. Pakistan has been long condemned and accused internationally for sheltering terrorist organizations on its soil and harboring terrorists to use them as proxy to mount cross-border attacks. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan also admitted during the United Nations General Assembly last month that it was ISI which trained Al-Qaeda to fight in Afghanistan during the Soviet war. Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina arrived in New Delhi on a four-day visit to India. She will be meeting Indian President Ramnath Kovind and will be holding discussions with Prime Minister Narendra Modi aimed at boosting bilateral ties. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina arrived in New Delhi on a four-day visit to India aimed at boosting bilateral ties between the two nations. This is Hasina's first visit after assuming office for the third consecutive term following 2018 parliamentary elections in Bangladesh. She will be meeting Indian President Ramnath Kovind and will be holding bilateral discussions with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on 5th October. 
Hasina and Modi had met on the sidelines of the 73rd session of the UN General Assembly in New York on September 27, where the two leaders reiterated their zero tolerance approach against terrorism and noted that strong ties in the security sector had built trust and mutual confidence between the two countries. An idol of Hindu goddess Durga installed at a marquee in India's eastern Kolkata has become the talk of the town for being made of around 50 kilograms of gold. Goddess Durga's idols are installed every year at various marquees across India during the night night festival of Navratri. An idol of Hindu goddess Durga made of around 50 kilograms of gold has been installed in India's eastern Kolkata city, which is attracting scores of visitors at a marquee during the ongoing Nine Nights Festival of Navratri. Goddess Durga's idols are installed every year at various marquees across India during Navratri and are immersed in water bodies on the 10th day celebrated as the Shara. The 50 kg idol has also been adorned with 110 kilograms of silver ornaments and is placed with other idols including that of Hindu elephant god Ganesha. It takes around two and a half months to make all uh, total panels and uh, the uh, uh, jo, uh, installation of the gold uh, of the idol that is uh, take around uh, almost three months, three months. and the uh, two and uh, 250 workers almost uh, worked on this uh, gold at day night. Devotees offer prayers to Goddess Durga during Navratri as it is believed that during the festival she visits the earth to bless them. Many people also observe fasts and some restrict their diet to fruits and vegetables, spurning meat, onions and garlic during the festival. India's Western Mumbai city is all set to host two pre-season games of NBA this week. The American Basketball League has brought to India the country's first ever floating basketball court in the Arabian Sea. American Professional Basketball League, the National Basketball Association or NBA has brought to India the first ever floating basketball court in the Arabian Sea near Bandra Verli Sea Link. The floating basketball court sailing on a barge is whipping up attention for the pre-season games scheduled to take place in India's Mumbai city on Friday and Saturday. NBA legend Jason Williams was also seen enjoying the floating court on Wednesday. Giving tips to youngsters, Williams said he believes that there is a lot of potential for growth of basketball in India and the upcoming games will only quicken the process of taking the sport to the masses. You know, you just got to work hard. You have to love it. You have to put, you have to dedicate all your time to it. Uh, you know, school and basketball, that's all it's got to be for you to, to reach the NBA. I mean, really just to reach college, you have to do that too because kids from all over the world are getting better at basketball every day. And, 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 and like you said, maybe India is maybe a couple steps behind everyone else, but, but that doesn't say they can't catch up. So we are quite excited and pumped up to see D'Aaron Fox, Sabotonis and a lot more such exciting ta talents. And you are having such promotional events like the floating basketball court at the World East Sea Bridge. So it's really amazing and it's really new. And so I feel great. NBA India had announced in December last year that the first ever NBA game in the country would be organized in October in Mumbai. The NBA India Games 2019 will feature the Sacramento Kings and Indiana Pacers, who will play two pre-season games on October 4th and 5th at the Sardar Vallabhai Patel Indoor Stadium in Mumbai. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Rescue and relief operations continue in India's flood-hit Bihar. Taliban delegation meets Pakistani foreign minister in Islamabad. And Bangladesh PM Hasina arrives in India on four-day visit. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. 
breaking news and views from India.